In a time when major franchises are dropping the ball left and right, and the most popular thing to talk about in Star Wars is which film screwed it up the worst. Get ready for EA to bring you a microtransaction free game with one very clear message. Oh god, we're still very scared about what happened with Battlefront 2. Please stop yelling at us! Star Wars Squadrons. Strap into the cockpit of your favorite ship from the Star Wars franchise, as long as you like the popular ones, and take to the stars in a reinvigoration of the Star Wars dogfighting game, a mini-genre basically abandoned almost 20 years ago for reasons unknown despite the fact that it's one of the most obvious ideas for a Star Wars game, where the giant capital ships behave like they're governed by the actual laws of physics, and everything else flies like it's a fighter jet still in Earth's atmosphere, instead of immediately turning the pilot into red paste the second they make a sharp turn. And, uh, that's kind of the whole game. Fly an X-Wing, it makes a pew-pew sound. What more do you want? Enjoy a discount Star Wars experience, where instead of trying to suck all your money out of you, you get exactly what you pay for, with a $40 price tag that buys you a modestly long campaign and exactly two multiplayer modes. Then unearth the hidden gulf between the haves and have-nots buried deep within squadrons, as you realize that the game was actually built for the type of lunatic that owns a HOTUS flight stick and was heavily designed to work as a VR experience from the detail of the cockpits to the point-and-click way you move around the hangars, which is great for everyone who already spent racks of cash on that stuff, but kinda makes everyone else feel like, well, like they're playing a VR game on a screen. It's like the gaming version of Drinking Soylent. I feel so unsatisfied. Blast your way through Squadron's ample campaign a post-Endor skirmish between the Rebels and the Empire that will have you literally playing both sides, in an impressively weightless and uninteresting storyline that basically serves as a long-ass tutorial, where you'll sit through a bunch of dialogue with either super serious or one-note quirky Rebels, and a bunch of perpetually salty Imperials. The New Republic will fall, just like the last one. Could have maintained order after Endor, but no. Good dog. Until you can get to the next part where you shoot guys again, in a series of missions clearly designed to get you to try all the ships and learn advanced techniques like not dying immediately to missiles. But unless you play it on a high difficulty, we'll probably just teach you to play like sh as you literally stop in mid space and just shoot at the side of Star Destroyers like it's not even an issue. A habit that won't help when you're trying not to get absolutely wrecked in multiplayer. Spoilers, you're going to get absolutely wrecked in multiplayer. Step into the online gauntlet of squadrons to test your mettle in 5v5 skirmishes where you can't hide your weakness and battle against those aforementioned virgins who've built realistic cockpits around their PC rigs or whatever as they fly an A-Wing behind you and put 300 lasers up your ass before you can say Lando Calrissian, while you're still trying to figure out which of the tiny dots on your radar to shoot. Or hide your shame in the Fleet Battles mode, which is basically Battlefront Ships Edition, where you can feel like you're helping by shooting down AI fighters and capital ships, while you push to the big climax of shooting at another big thing that's sitting still. Then do it over and over again, I guess, and grind out those slightly different helmets. Until you either are destroyed by the flight sim nerds, or worse, you become one. No! So search those feelings, and dredge up what dregs of nostalgia you can still find for Star Wars. Because in the decades since you've last played one of these things, Star Wars has been wrung out like a hand towel for every last drop the franchise can produce and the chance of it feeling like it used to when you played X-Wing or Rogue Squadron, rather than a $40 shrug, is about as good as you taking down the Death Star with a sock full of nickels and a golf cart. Starring Mean Space Brits Friendly but business-like rebels A bunch of disgusting aliens 
And the minimum $500 you'd have to spend on peripherals to play this thing right. Star Wars Bloodrin. You know this game really drives home just how ass the TIE Fighter really is? Flimsy as hell, can't see out of the damn thing, and they sound like a moose stuck in a washing machine. No wonder the Imperials are always losing. Tell us what you'd like to hear in my honest voice in the comments below. And then along came Zeus. For the last time, Paimon is not an emergency food. These eggs are a little raw. One is still chirping. That's why I love Nestle Crunch. Brian, whatever kills me makes me stronger.